Hello everyone, today I'm going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I've never played this game before, but I play him in Marvel vs. Capcom, so yeah, I'm probably going to do just fine. This game is easy, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be that bad. Let's just let's have some fun. Don't always really need to be a pro gamer all the time. <sighs> How did I get in this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright. What the heck's going on? What the fuck? What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. <laughs> but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. <laughs> Rest in peace, Phoenix, right? R.I.P., my boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, never mind. <coughs> wow, nice ringtone, stinky. What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. <laughs> and no shit, Sherlock. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before our trial starts anyway. Huh. Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found- <laughs> This is fucking Okiyasu? Gosh, what the fuck is going on? Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but- Oh my god, is he gonna murder? It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, slap that Michelle! Slap that Michelle! A few minutes later, Da -da 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 -da. I'm not gonna read all that. That's some bonkers, bonkers. <laughs> Ugh, my head. It's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? <laughs> oh, good morning. Oh my. Ah! Good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well! People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fucking spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheering in sound? My head sort of hurts. Oh, what the heck? Roger that! Uh, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. What? What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble! What? What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Life in my hands? Yeah, you promised me! You promised me you would prove that I was not guilty! Not... not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had to laugh me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was burned in tears. Oh, this is a beautiful story already. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever! What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... Um, what's wrong? You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Uh, sorry. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who, who are you? <laughs> Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible! No, I, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. N no, it's just, well, I, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... 
Ooh, this this dude don't know who he is. Ooh, why am I drawing a blank? Who am I? This is getting juicy. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer priest please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Wow, she's intense as fuck. Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see. What can I piece together? From my conversation, I can safely say that I'm probably a defense attorney. <laughs> and that girl. I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ugh, someone please! Tell me this is just a bad dream! Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? <laughs> this guy. I did the gulp. No one can ever say I'm not a good voice actress. I did the gulp. Okay. Let the record show I did the gulp. Did I land? Ooh, that judge though. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Maggie? I guess it's Maggie. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Uh, um. Yes. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? I want to do yes, I don't know. Yes, Your Honor. Wait a second. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I did. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're all aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What the? What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me! And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. Oh my god! I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay. Inverted? Please bring Detective Dick Gumshoot <laughs> to the stand. <laughs> Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. This game is fucking lit. I swear to God. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I am the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know... You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down, I believe. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. <laughs> yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. Ooh, that's gruesome. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. <laughs> ah, yes. The autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? 
I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well. The court accepts it as evidence. Oof. Oof. Sasser. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head all right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the, under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually, um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you want to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep! Info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by touching the court record button. The court record button? You really know what you're talking about, huh? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think. I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. S Sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it again? The court record? <laughs> Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if you're not starting already. Oh, man. A picture. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, all right. I don't know what to make of this, but. Here we go. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Um, these glasses, huh? That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the criminal's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held on to them as he fell. Oh, wow. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Yeah, dude, what's your problem? Those glasses you're wearing. Uh, yes, this is my spare pair. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine! I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on that same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. <laughs> You're on it. I have further evidence to present. Oh? You have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Ooh. This is intense. And there's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. Oh! I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard to say she's not the culprit. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Oh my god. Well, that's... Great. You're fucked, kiddo. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Why, this! 
This is... Yes, I can see the name clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Alright. Wow. This is insane. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, but I already told you those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Oh my god. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court. Which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Whoa, this is intense as hell. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Y yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. And there's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. About those glasses. Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness and are almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kind of like the ones she's wearing in her ID, pal. Hmm. What should I do now? Hold it. Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Mm, uh, do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? I like this guy. Uh, uh, the dirt and sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So what are you saying, detective? Is that you have nothing proves that those glasses are my clients? Uh, something like that. <laughs> what? I see. Hmm. So there's no proof. Wow! That was amazing! Yeah, I had to agree. Oh my god, that was sick. I could totally feel it down in my gut. During his eight, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name of that of my client? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. I don't know, it's so weird. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't call me. I know the picture says Maggie, but now that she mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I better check the court record again. I need to check this. And are you certain that it is the victim who wrote the name on the grass? I mean, 
How's he gonna write shit when he has a broken spine? There's scratches from fingers uh, from his fingers from the rough sand, and there are grains of sand stuck under his pointer fingernail. Hmm. It certainly seems that the name was written by the victim himself. That didn't go well. If you really miss him, there were no trouble. Don't give up! Keep that fighting spirit going! I'm glad you're all pumped up, but I really want to see your special move, sir. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present evidence? Please enlighten me, because I don't want to get you deado. Please. I'm um, about this presenting evidence. Okay, when you're listening to testimony, you can compare it with the court record. If you do that, you're sure to find contradictions in the witness's statements. C contradictions? Well, there are many reasons why testimony might contradict the evidence. The witness might be lying, or maybe they're just mistaken. Uh-huh. And? You still have no idea what I'm talking about? When you find a contradiction, open the court record to the item you need. And then, I present that evidence, right? You got it. You can also present people's profiles as evidence. With so many items, make sure you present the right thing. Hmm. Sounds complicated, but I'll give it a try. You're pretty good at this. Wow, being praised by a friend. I don't know what to say. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Let's go. Mm -hmm. The culprit's name. Yeah, I was surprised too. Anyone? Is that the name of my client? Um, no, it's not. Dingus. <laughs> what is it? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. What a rush. Detective Gumshoe. You talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. There's a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? Come on, the defendant's name is, a uh, Maggie Bird. <laughs> nope. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. <laughs> it looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Ugh. How about that? I didn't even notice! Maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. <laughs> Objection. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not have known her name. Yeah, you fucking idiot. Ooh. This is very true. Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Y yes, I am quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court 
The relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. Ooh. This just got lit. Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean, Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had gotten over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh. Oh. Those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. This fucking asshole. Hmm. Yes, I see. You may cross-examine the writ the witness, Mr. Wright. Dustin and Maggie. Ooh. Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for about half a year. Um It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. So. Oh, Hold on. The day of the incident, you mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Ah. I remember when I was young and in love. Ah. Oh, it was a jolly time. Glad you're such a cheerful old man. <laughs> <coughs> Maggie, I mean, Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had gotten over two months ago. Over two months ago? Yep. She's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why don't she only give him one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. Oh, a baseball glove. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had gotten over two months ago. Yeah? Are you saying she went out and bought the glove over two months ago? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made? Yep, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to the case. Yeah, it would seem that there is a little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? You think this glove is really relevant to this case? Of course it's relevant. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes! Bluffing to the max! Now this is the Mr. Wright I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Hmm. Pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this. To squeeze information from me with the most tight-lipped people. Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about this matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry up and show the glove to this court! Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it?
Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had the special order? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. It's clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the grounds. Yes, sir. We first looked into the handwriting, sir. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was a sand trap under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on the skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hands. Hmm, yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Dun -dun -dun. We first looked into the handwriting. But can you really determine handwriting based on a sample written in sands? <laughs> this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Hmm. I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So what was the result of the investigation? Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. So in the end, you couldn't confirm it? Hey, don't you look down on us. I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I've never heard that before. Me either. Nor I. I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. <gasps> anyway. Next, we check the victim's pointer finger. His pointer finger? You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces. <laughs> Don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. In any case, you examined the victim's index finger, correct? Yeah. You figured there should be something on his finger if he had been writing in sands. Hmm. And the results? We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. And what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write that name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. There are also scratches on the skin that were caused by him riding on the ground. Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with your own naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible. Sure is. That's the power of scientific investigation. They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those and that's how I found them. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. From this, we can confirm that the victim wrote his name with his right hands. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow, and that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? 
It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right! This glove is made to be worn on the right hand! That is why it had to be custom made. I've never seen such a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale. Have you? Well, uh, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his... Wait a second. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! That is... I mean... I... Uh, shit! Overruled. Ooh! Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person cannot have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order. Order. When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is... No. It's not possible. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! Alright, you did it, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I feel like I can breathe again. Me too. That was intense. It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Ooh, me, Your Honor. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. No, not yet. <gasps> Nani? I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What? What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. <laughs> this game is ridiculous. <laughs> and what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Order. Order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. Hmm. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. Wow. That was sick. Well, wow. That was intense. I guess I'm gonna save and finish this later. Thank you for watching, y'all. Have a very good time.